Well, now it's time that we take the theory that we have learned so far and put it to use in our first filter, the comma filter. As we will see, the comma filter is important as it's one of the few filters that is actually able to solve the filtering equations exactly, at least under certain modeling assumptions. However, this is not the only reason why it's important to understand the comma filter. As we will see in later parts of the course, it's also the basis for many other filters that can handle more general settings by finding approximative solutions to our filtering equations. So, remember that we divided the filtering problem into two parts. The prediction step, and an update step. Where we in the prediction step calculated the predicted distribution, that is the distribution of xk given measurements up to time k minus 1, by solving this chapman kolmogorov integral, like this. While in the update step, we calculated this posterior distribution, that is the distribution of xk given measurements up to time k in this case. We do this by solving the product between the likelihood, expressed like this, and the prior. Where the prior, in this case, is the predicted density that we calculated in the previous step. Note that the filtering equations that we see here are general, in the sense that they can solve any filtering problem with any underlying model assumptions. However, in many situations, this integral here is difficult to compute, and when we try to calculate this posterior density by solving this product, we typically end up with a completely different density family than we started with. So, unfortunately, there are very few examples where this posterior density has an analytical expression. There is, though, one important model family for which this is possible, and that is what we call family of linear and Gaussian models. So, mathematically, we define the linear and Gaussian models uh, like this. So, for a state vector uh, xk and an observation yk, we see that we both have a linear uh, process model and a linear measurement model. As both of these models just scale the state vector by either a so-called transition matrix, AK, in the process model case, or by a measurement model matrix, in the measurement model case. Note also that the process noise, QK minus one, and the measurement noise, RK, are additive Gaussian noise processes with some mean and covariance. Additionally, we assume that the prior state is also Gaussian distributed with some mean and covariance. We should note that it's common that we model these uh, noise processes as zero mean. That means that the mean of these are assumed to be zero. And this is how we will view them in general in this course, and in particular when we present the comma filter equations later on in this lecture. However, it's important to note that this is not a requirement for a, to be a linear Gaussian model, uh, nor is it a requirement for the comma filter to work. So one of the more important properties of these models is that any conditional distribution on X, given a set of, of measurements, is a Gaussian distribution. So the distribution of XM, uh, given observations from 1 to N, is Gaussian for all M and N. What this means is that for linear and Gaussian models, all our densities are Gaussian, irrespectively if we look at the filtering, the smoothing, or the prediction problem. I would encourage you to convince yourself of this by first convincing yourself that if, for example, m is larger than n, then the joint density of p of x from 1 to m and our observations y 1 to n is jointly Gaussian. And if we marginalize out everything here but xm, it is still a Gaussian distribution. So marginalization doesn't change this. Then condition on y1 to n, 
it is still a Gaussian distribution, and this doesn't change it either. So it's conditional Gaussian. 